Hello, my name is uh, Hadi Klaassen. I already work for quite some years with gender and gender equality, and I still love it. Uh, because it's everywhere and everybody has to do with it. It's at your work, but it's also in the streets, it's in, with your family, with your uh, neighbors, um, and that makes it so interesting. Now, let me show you why this is and how you can recognize it in your surroundings. The gender wheel, I've put it here, um, shows you that there are like five phases or moments where gender equality is kind of created. And the first one, what you will see is, um, it starts on this side, and that's about gender roles that are defined at birth. We get different clothes on, we are expected to behave differently, to play different games, and what you will see is then, we go to school, um, there are different expectations of what we will do in, in our career or in our working life, and all these different elements in our um, in the way we're raised, uh, have an influence on what we will be doing later at the second stage when we start to work. And this is where um, gender roles um, define a kind of what kind of work will we take on if we're a woman or if we're a man. Men are expected to take on leading positions, to do heavy work as construction works, um, to take on a business, to, uh, to lead a company, but also uh, enter in po into politics, um, all these um, jobs are kind of related to what we think is, is good for men. While women are expected to take on caring roles. So they, that's about jobs like nursing, like teaching, like assisting the leaders in uh, being a receptionist or a, a secretary. Um, there is a different value uh, to the different roles and labor that men and women do. Uh, and actually it is attached to having a leading role, a leading kind of job or a caring kind of job. So what happens then? And then we see we continue from the values up to the different um, access to resources. When people are more appreciated, so in, in our case often men are more appreciated for the kind of work they do, they have different access to resources. So what you see is that men have uh, ac access to more money, for example. You already see it in the differences in salary, even for the same kind of job. Um, when you move to the last phase, is that if you have this different kind of access to resources, it has a direct influence on who takes decisions on these resources. If you've never access to loans or education or um, higher salaries, you're not going to be in a position either to actually make a difference or to decide on it. And this is what happens in our societies, that often men are the ones taking decisions. If you look at the pictures um, that you see in newspapers on who are the ones in politics, who are our religious leaders, who are the ones in decision-making positions, these often are men. And this is where you can see that the inequality arises even further, and if you continue, you, s you keep on raising your children the same way, the wheel goes on. So what can you do? And any time, maybe when you're raising your kids, or maybe when you're working, or maybe um, when you want to have access to some resources, or you want to create access for others, you can give this wheel a punch. Yeah? It's like a stone where the wheel bumps into, and, um, and this is where the wheel starts to, uh, to move, and where you make a change automatically other phases will change as well. So, my question to you is, are you ready to take on the challenge uh, to make a difference and to give the wheel a punch?